And I was the last one to come, but the last shall be first. <laughs> uh, and completely abusing my position, I was saying to uh, Leonor, we were just chatting, that this is very different because what you, you get for, often for these evening lectures, because what it seems to, to me that you, uh, you're uh, offering us some um, uh, equipment for this adventure of, 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 of the presence of the Lord. But I have a problem. This is my problem. The most intimate, intense moment, arguably, for, for a Christian, so if a Catholic Christian or an Orthodox Christian, is, is this moment of communion. Actually, for a Protestant Christian, is the moment of communion. But in the Eucharist, in the Catholic Church, anyway, shortly after you receive, you're told to go away. Now, it's nobody's fault, it's three minutes. Because if the priest is saying, go forth and be Christ to the world, it's almost you're taken, because if you stayed in there, you'd be denying the grace of the sacrament of the body of Christ for the world. So, John, my first question, and I know these have got loads of questions, but I'm cheating because I'm going first. Is, how do I get out of that? I'm in this intense moment of communion, and I've got to go out there where all the world's distractions are on my head. Go for it. <laughs> so I'm going back to my orange juice. <laughs> But 
Your question is important because it's it's very close to leadership. It's, as I as I showed the link, because we cannot separate the prayer of the heart from the mass. We did it. I think it's wrong. I think we have to go back to as I do it, just to say it's in fact the extension of the last community. It is sold, it is not lost, so I can go back to it. Whether I go back to it immediately, I, I don't stop and I continue. Uh, some priests in certain churches, I don't know, like uh, monasteries, the priest will take before the dispensation, before sending people away, he will take Motor. easily five minutes or ten minutes. I saw, I witnessed that, I had that. Uh, and then you say, okay, let us pray, and then he can do it. But still, these are five to ten minutes, you can take more. So, um, I think it's not either or. Your question is, what can I, how can I deal with it? Because it's either or. I don't think the answer is either or. The answer is this and that. I'm not saying, don't give money for the cafe or don't go around in the store to, to do something. But just everything in, in its own place. What I'm trying to say is that the this moment is uh, all together, this moment of communion, and the two or three minutes after, is all together extremely high and extremely neglected. And we take for granted that since we received, then it's fine. No, it's not fine. Because if you do that, you are cancelling what? The freedom of human being. As I said, there is something I am supposed to do. I can do it after communion, during and after communion, and I can do it at home, I can do it, I can set a time for it, and this is my responsibility. Uh, there is awareness or not in, in my own parish, this is something, or in the whole church, this is something that will, will come one day, or we hope, but it's, I'm here today and I, I have to do it, I do it. So in my parish I don't do it, and I don't expect that immediately to do it, because it's, it's a lot of training. Uh, um, I was training monks years ago, and um, some of the monks were trained, uh, some of the monks weren't trained about these things, and I was training the monks, so I trained them with these things. Um, and you could see the difference. Some of them would automatically remain, or come for the moment of prayer, and the others will, wouldn't. You see? Training, education is important. This is why I created the School of Mary, because I, I, I'm convinced that if you don't give to people the keys, if you don't make people responsible, and you don't, and if, if I don't explain how, how to do it, well, how can I then say, I'm, and I'm challenging, not you, but through, through your question, I'm challenging again the same issues, well then why the priest says, lift up your hands? I challenge any priest, any priest, Bring me to priest and say, can you explain for me, Father, what, how, what is to, 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 to lift up my heart? You won't have an answer, a clear answer, that this is the beginning, this is just 50 minutes. Uh, you know, I, I usually give more than 50 minutes to explain that. I take uh, 2 plus uh, 7 by 2, uh, 14 hours. 14 hours. The basic course I give to explain all, everything, all what you need. As a Christian adult, in order to walk free, I, at least 14 hours of explanation. And you've got only 15 minutes. So imagine what you would be uh, after that. So, this is important. You, you say, well, communion. Well, I challenge the whole thing. Why he says, lift up your hearts? It's, it's a routine. It's automatic. We are all automatic. We're, we're, we don't know what we're doing. Lift up your hearts. Did you do something? I never did anything. And I heard it tons of times. So it's the same it's, The problem is, I, mean, I is think, I don't be wrong here, but I, I suspect everybody here, I suspect everybody here has had moments in prep. Do you know what I mean? And, and, or or uh, a, 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 a friend, or a, a nun, or a priest, or a brother, or a companion has, has given us all an insight once or twice into, uh, um, like an entry into the mystery. And um, I mean, I'd just be interested to hear how other people Enter the mystery uh, because it, um, visually, John, John, you you you're sort of inviting us to explore that. I mean, that's what I think tonight's about, isn't it? Exploring uh, 
uh, this mystery uh, of the prayer of the heart. But I, I, su I suspect it, it's what you're trying to give is tools to stay there. I love that line that nobody's going to stay there if they've not got, um, if they're like, <laughs> things to do when they're there. <laughs> but it's almost that, you know, because you go off a quick minute and you're away. But, yeah. um, I reckon some of these people have got some beautiful prayer secrets mm -hmm. that I don't want them to keep secret. Does anyone want to their own experience or any further questions? Don't feel afraid because we, we are all beginners to a degree. We are all struggle with, with prayer. Don't we think that some people are, are, are... Your questions is certainly an interesting question. So don't, don't, yeah. Um, so this is me talking as a very selfish human being. You get to um, you get to this point. Is it is it possible to be consciously aware when you're in this point? Because I suppose the whole point, you would like to live your life as immersed in this reality as possible. Because I suppose that will make you you know it will help you realise you know you'll always be a really loving person because you're immersed in this mystery. So is it possible to be consciously aware of it, or just because I'm a human being would it? You know, how do, how do I, oh, I know there's probably not time, but the tools to remain on this. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, there are two questions. One is conscious and one is uh, the tools. This question is absolutely important. And I will express it in my own way. Is it possible to be conscious of what is happening? Like perception. Consciousness is perception. Can I, can I be, first of all, do we perceive, and what do we perceive when we are doing this prayer? So here, please, I, I need all your attention. There is a line here, I didn't do the line during the, 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 the lecture, I did it after the gentleman before leaving asked me a question, so I drew the line here. Same, almost same question as you. Which is, <clears throat> there is a line, and this line is absolutely fundamental in spiritual life because if we lose uh, the understanding of this line, confusion enters in our uh, spiritual life. What is this line? This line differentiates two areas in our being the deep roots and the visible part of the tree consciousness, perception, awareness, and a higher awareness that doesn't fall in the area of awareness. This is not the subconscious. <clears throat> this is a higher consciousness, supra conscious, because this is closer to God, so it's supra, and upside down, remember. So we are like a tree, but an upside down tree. Our roots are in God, and, and the conscious part, the visible part of the tree, is that. You see what I mean? This is the tree. And these are the roots of the tree. Forget about this and this is. So when I pray, I allow all this area to be immersed in God. So I am watering my garden. And it is essential. But do I see the water? The answer is no. Do I perceive the water? The answer is no. I might perceive something if God wants. <laughs> so let us go back to this design. Forget about this here. We are back here. This upper part, or shall I do it back again? This is a perception, consciousness, active. I, my will and my intelligence are active, I'm thinking, I'm reading, I'm speaking, I'm aware, I, I woke up. And this is, this is what, what I call the heart, but the heart is, is uh, supra-conscious, like higher consciousness, because it's closer to God. The distance between consciousness and God, it's this, so it's supra-conscious. So, what, when I meet, when I am inside of God, we don't have any meaning when I am here inside my heart. The area that perceives perception is here. 
So I don't have access to what is happening inside. The usual thing, but not always, that I perceive is a little bit of peace. Because if the tree is having water, you know that you are fine, but deep, deep. You don't see it, but deep, deep you see it. So a certain echo of a deep peace is coming to you. So the peace is irradiating from the center here outside. So what you receive here is what? If your heart is drinking or eating the substance of God, your consciousness is having what? This is a big meal you are eating here, God himself. But what you are having here is what? Crumbs. You had it? What is it? Crumbs? That's a well written crumb. Okay. Crumbs. Crumbs, when you eat, you have a sandwich, something fat four falls, it's crumbs. It's not the sense, it's not your meal. Your meal, you are having it deep inside. When I receive the Eucharist, it's happening deep inside. What do I feel? I feel a certain sense of peace, a certain sense of closeness to God, but I don't have direct access to God for, to, from this part. I have direct access here, the deepest part of me, but the external part doesn't have access. This line is the line of discernment, because if you mix both, it's the end, the beginning and the end of spiritual life. Because you will say, what would you say then? I did it, I didn't feel anything, I stopped it. I did it, I didn't feel anything, because I, there's confusion between the two areas. Since I don't feel, it means it's not there. This means conf confusion between the two areas. It's like I have to perceive what is happening. No, you perceive an echo. You might not perceive the echo. And in very advanced um, people, people who are really deep in their spiritual life, they reach a point where what they perceive here is the opposite. You don't feel even peace at all. Why? Because inside, he's starting to purify deeply your being. So the perception is exactly the opposite, because all the dirt is pop popping up. So what you see is dirt, but it's your dirt, you should be happy, but in fact, no, you get depressed. Why? Because you are not, not get depressed, you don't understand what's happening. But in fact, because it's cleaning, but it's deep, deep, deep purification. So this is why we have to be very clear on perception and what is happening. This is why you need two ways in order to check, am I doing it right or not? You have two ways to know it. One way is within this practice of the prayer of the heart to keep the other practice you remember what I said? you have two legs what, what, what was the other leg? listening to the word of God and putting it into practice why? because listening involves awareness you cannot say I come out of legs with me and say I don't know really what he said to me then you didn't do it but if you really receive something if really the Holy Spirit helped you to listen to Jesus then you receive the word then you know and you have to put it practice. It's not doubt here, it's putting something into practice. So this is awareness. So what is in charge of awareness is, is the first part of the Mass. What is in charge of the deepest part of me, the roots of my being, is the prayer of the heart or communion and then the prayer of the heart. So what protects to a degree and boosts the practice of the prayer of the heart is listening to the word of God and putting it into practice. There are some people without pointing, I think you're on any, not here. Right? Who do practice a lot the prayer of the heart? This point is very important. So people say, okay, well, beautiful. Now we are starting now to practice it. But they drop completely listening to the word of God and putting it into practice. What happens is that you are weakening the structure of your being because you are relying on something that is super conscious. You go, look, you can't check it. You can't check it. If you go to a spiritual uh, director, uh, and said, okay, well, I'm doing the prayer of the heart, but uh, this, this, and that. And I felt that Jesus did this to me, and I got very overwhelmed. So it's all blah, blah, blah. Why? Because there is no mean for him to check it. 
he trusts you or he doesn't trust you. End of. But then what? Nothing. But if you say, I listen to the word of God and I'm struggling to put in this point into practice, but now with the help of God I was able to do it. This is more powerful, this is more practical then. You know you did it. Well here, anything can happen. I know this. There are people who told me, oh you know, I got this. Ah, oh, it's fabulous, we go grab the heart, this is this, 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 that. I don't I half listen to that. I half listen to that. Why? Because I need to rest, the practicality. And these are the two legs. So Back to your question. Uh, this is the second way, this is the way to check it is or to do the, the listening to the word of God, putting it in practice. And the second way, and this is very rare, if you find a real uh, spiritual master, he can pray with you and then check it. And they say, and guide you even how to, how to do it. But this is very rare. Usually, you just rely on this and very general spiritual perfection, unfortunately. This is our Okay? So, perception. You don't necessarily feel something. You might feel in the beginning. You might even feel you have some tears even. It's so, so, so strong, so intense when you practice it, you feel some tears, etc. But then you tend to sort of think that with, if you don't have the tears, it means that you didn't pray. If you don't feel this intensity, it means you didn't pray. The intensity you feel is here. Feeling, the perception is here. But it doesn't mean that you didn't take your heart. It takes your heart, trust me. But the perception that he took my heart is a different business. This is fundamental discernment in spiritual life. Otherwise, don't speak about spiritual life for the same. Another question? Sorry, I was a bit long. I think we'll take just one more, one last question. Okay, they both will ask me the question, I will give one. <laughs> <laughs> no, because sometimes you combine. That's good. <laughs> you combine the answer. Yes.
sorry, back to you as well as your question. You said, um, the, in general, when you read about Christian meditation, or any meditation, even outside of Christianity, the tendency is to focus on the technical part of it, which is sitting down, uh, if you go Buddhist or, or yoga or whatever, you will have to really take care of your posture, the position of your body, etc. You can spend hours to straighten your back, etc. Fair enough, but this doesn't ring God, but anyway. Uh, and then, you go a step, step ahead, that would be like a mantra or a word that you will have to repeat, breathing in, breathing out, etc. The attention is on what? The attention is what you can do, and it's on the repetition of a sentence that is called, outside of Christianity, a mantra. Okay? The key for the, to, to allow the contact with God to happen is not conveying here, because I'm telling you, repeat this sentence. But earlier on, what did I say? Offer yourself to Jesus. The difference is huge, because Jesus is not a machine. I'm repeating my word, put 20 pence, and then it will bring you something. Jesus is not a machine. Jesus is a being like you. He is free, you are free. And he speaks the language of, of love. So if you want it to work, just enter in this relationship and offer yourself. Then what happens? You are not anymore here. So uh, this is closer than to the question. When you repeat, you repeat, you repeat. You repeat like wanting to focus on what you are saying. No, no, no. Focus on just your throwing yourself like a little child in the arms of his mother. No? A little child of walking like that, walking you know, here. And then I say, come, 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 come. But he does, he runs, 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 run, and then throws himself on my chest. This movement from here, to me, is what I'm explaining. It's as simple as that. This is why Jesus says, if you want to enter in the kingdom, means if you want to enter, if you want to enter in this area, and most Christians specifically this area, you have to be like a child. It means what? You have to give yourself and let yourself in God, and He will take you. Okay? So is this brain thing involved? No. You are saying it, but you are saying it peacefully, not <laughs> did I say it or not, that I'm focusing or not. If you do this, where are you? You are here. And I don't want you to be here. He doesn't want you to be here. Because you are not the master. The brain is not the master. The brain is a servant. It's a very high servant, and a beautiful servant, but it's still a servant. The heart, your heart, your, your, the core of your being that moves here, is what has price to his eyes. So repeating does only express a movement and it's not a technique in itself. This is my answer. Repeating expresses a desire but is not a technique in itself. There is no technique. The key is give yourself. This is what Teresa of Avila says. She summarizes the whole, her whole book, The Way of Perfection, this can be summarized in just one sentence. You give yourself, he gives himself. You don't give yourself, you half give yourself, he half gives himself. So it's not, the repetition is just a gentle protection, it's a gentle expression of your, of your love to keep sort of, it's exactly the opposite of, of what some people, uh, some, some people may think, which is, I'm not thinking, I'm trying to calm the mind in order to do something else. You see, it's like I want to release, like when you, you, you wear a, a bracelet and then you put some soap and then you remove your hand from, the, you remove the bracelet, no? It's exactly what's happening. I want to, re, to remove and be free. I don't want to be in this box. So it's not about thinking. Prayer doesn't happen here. This is why I did this. While they might tell you, you have to repeat, you have to sit down and say, and say, and say. But this is not the key. Okay? okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sean. I'm sure we all think you're doing